Welcome to r slash petty revenge, where no revenge is too small. Our next Reddit post is from Ouroboros. A couple of years ago, I worked for a small team within a larger organization that ran a rather niche grant program. The team was literally me, my boss Charles, and two part-time consultants who did our finances and bookkeeping. My boss and I had a great rapport. He hired me to essentially run large aspects of our program and gave me pretty much unilateral oversight of the key elements of it, from program design and development to execution. He was a great manager in this respect. He provided a lot of mentoring and guidance, but mostly got out of my way and only wanted me to escalate the big stuff that I felt rose to his level. While I didn't love the job itself, I loved having so much freedom. I was sort of bridging that gap of moving from a young professional into a mid-career professional and so this offered a lot of growth opportunities. One thing that made my boss great was that he always had my back. One day I was in the office pretty much alone. My boss was on the board of a few organizations and he was off on some half day meeting. Our offices were right across from each other so I could typically see him when he came and left and I could hear when his phone rang. That morning, his phone was ringing and ringing and ringing. Then finally, my phone rang. It was the executive director of one of the organizations we worked with, an older man maybe in his 70s. The conversation went something like this. OP speaking, how can I help you? I've been calling Charles all morning and he's not answering. Yeah, he's at a half day board meeting. Is there something I can help you with? I doubt it. Maybe you could just check his calendar and put a call with me on there for when he's back. I'm sorry, I wish I could, but I don't have access to his calendar, so I can't see what he has in the afternoon and I can't add things to his calendar. I'm sure he'll be back soon. That is unacceptable! How does his secretary not have access to his calendar? Who sets his meetings? Now, here's the thing. While I am my boss's employee, I am not his secretary. I don't have access to his calendar and my boss sets his own meetings. Not only that, but I had corresponded with and even met this executive director in the past. My signature block and business card clearly says program manager, as does my bio on our webpage. Alas, this wasn't the first time someone had assumed that I was my boss's secretary. It happens. I was in my late 20s at the time, and as a young professional woman working for a man, it seemed a common misconception. Usually it's not a big deal. Normally, I clarify my role and people feel a little embarrassed and then we go on about our lives, so I clarified my role for the executive director. Just to clarify, I am not Charles' secretary. He doesn't have a secretary. I'm actually the program manager. Charles manages his schedule on his own. If you want to shoot us both an email, I'll make sure that he responds and sets up a time to talk to you. Otherwise, when he comes back, I'll let him know that you called so you can arrange a meeting. The executive director cuts me off again. Well, I have an important question for him, and it's unacceptable that I can't set up a meeting with him and I also can't get an answer to it right away. How is this good client service? Well, you know, I am the program manager. Why don't you tell me what your question is and maybe I can help you? The executive director explained that he called to talk about the application process and requirements for a program of ours, one that I actually ran. Not only that, but his questions were simple enough that I wouldn't need to escalate to my boss. These were things that I could easily help with. I said, well, you're in luck. I'm actually the one who runs that program, not Charles. I designed that application process and I would actually be able to answer your questions with a lot more detail than Charles would. He would just defer you to me. Why don't you tell me your questions and I'll answer them? There was a long pause. Then, in a patronizing tone, he said, Young lady, I'm sure you're very bright. And I'm sure you want to be helpful, but I'd really prefer to talk to Charles. Why don't you just take a message for him for me, okay? Now I'm kind of pissed. I'm about to tell him where he can shove his message when I see my boss coming down the hallway. So I tell the executive director that he's in luck. I see Charles now. Let me go tell him that you're on the line and to get back to you. So I put the executive director on hold and intercept my boss. I kinda explain the situation. My boss chuckles to himself and says, transfer him over. I transfer the call and I can hear my boss pick up the phone. Chuck speaking. Oh, hi there, executive director. How can I help you? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was at a half-day board meeting. You have a question about which program? Okay, what's your question? Uh-huh, you want to know about the application process and criteria. Uh-huh. Okay, well, have you spoken to OP? Well, she's actually the one who manages that program. Yes, she actually designed the application process. Sorry, Executive Director, I wouldn't be able to answer that specific question. No, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Yes, that's right. OP manages the entire program and she's really the expert on it. Let me go see if she's in her office. 
I hear my boss put the phone on hold. He takes a long pause before he gets back on. I'm sorry, Executive Director, but it appears she must have stepped away from her desk. No, again, I'm sorry, but she's really leading the program, so you'll have to speak with her. I could transfer you to her voicemail if you wish. No? Okay. Do you have her email? Great. So send her an email and I'm sure she'll get back to you on all your questions ASAP. The executive director didn't email me for a couple of days, and when he finally did, I helpfully walked him through all the details of that program he was interested in. I love this reply from Taz Bass. Not only did your boss force him to talk to you, but your boss forced him to wait to talk to you. What a power move. Our next Reddit post is from I'm on an all-carb diet. About four months before Christmas in 2018, my boyfriend at the time accidentally spilled a drink on his laptop and destroyed it. He couldn't afford a new one and it was his main source of entertainment, so I said he could borrow mine since I didn't use it that often. Everything was fine until Christmas that year. He still hadn't gotten a new laptop by that point, but I assumed that was because he was saving up to get himself a decent laptop rather than a sucky one. Anyway, he handed me my gift and to my surprise, it was a brand new laptop. I assumed that he had bought me a laptop to replace my old one and he was going to take my old laptop for himself. Nope. His gift to me was buying himself a new laptop so that he didn't have to use mine anymore. Nothing else. Just that. I was outraged, but then a petty thought crossed my mind. Little did he know that I had fallen into a bit of money, so I had decided to surprise him with a top-of-the-range gaming laptop, which was easily more than double the price and quality of the one that he bought himself. So I decided to give him his present. When he opened it, his eyes lit up and he looked so excited at the prospect of his new laptop. But when he started to open his gift, I took it back from him and told him it was actually for me and my gift was letting him keep his new laptop without me trying to use it all the time. Of course, we got into a massive argument that eventually led to us breaking up. I returned the laptop and used the money to go on a spontaneous holiday with my friend for New Year's Eve. No regrets. OP, it sounds like your real Christmas gift that year was freeing yourself of your terrible boyfriend. Our next Reddit post is from Dear Ghouls. I'm a bartender, and the area where I work is upper class and petty as hell. As I tell people all the time, I don't go out here, I just work here. One random night not too long ago, I'm making drinks at the well for servers to take to their customers while the other bartenders handle our bar top guests. It's the middle of our rush, and one of my servers comes up with a drink one quarter full and sets it down saying the customer hates it and was demanding a different drink. Specifically, they wanted a vodka mojito. I was too busy to put up a fight, and the poor server looked run down already from the night, so I went ahead and made it, even though it was obvious the woman was just looking for free drinks. The server runs the drink to the table, and it happens to be the table closest to my well so I can see and hear everything. The server sets it down and hurries off to another table, and I watch as this woman absolutely slams the drink until there's nothing but men and ice left in the glass. And maybe half an ounce of liquid on the bottom, then she turns around and grabs the server again. Um, I specifically asked for this with vodka. Yes ma'am, it is. I know what vodka tastes like. This is clearly rum. Tell your bartender to make it right this time. I'm not paying for this. The server tried to say something, but was rudely cut off and told to remake it again, so she picks up the glass and walks over to me. I'm so sorry, OP, she starts. And I immediately tell her it's okay. I saw the whole thing. Girl, don't worry. I got you. So I remade the woman's drink. One virgin mojito coming up. Nothing but mint, lime, simple, and soda water. I cannot explain the satisfaction that we both felt when that drink hit the table and we watched the woman sip it and go... Now that is vodka. You get what you pay for. Down in the comments, we have this story from Ashton Cat. My favorite memory about sucky customers thinking their drinks are wrong happened to me and my friend who used to work with me as a bartender. One of my tables ordered a vodka cranberry. Simple enough, right? So I asked my bartender buddy to make it for me and he does and I bring it back to drop it off. I came back a moment later after the customer had taken a few sips and she said, This vodka cranberry isn't made right. It's the wrong color. It's supposed to be light pink and this isn't. It's too red. And she was really rude about it too. Also, this was during the holiday season and we were slammed. As someone who drinks a lot of vodka cranberries, this seemed ridiculous and the bartender agreed. He said, watch this, and poured her drink into a taller, slimmer glass with more ice, which made the color much lighter. And when I brought it back, she took one sip and said, hmm, yeah, that's how it's supposed to be made. And then she scoffed at me. Our next Reddit post is from Bastet. 
I lived with my son's father and his family for a while after my son was born. He and I have broken up since, thank God. It was supposed to be mutually beneficial, but it turned into me and my son's grandfather being the only people working and paying bills in the house. My ex's mother hated me. She didn't really have a reason to, she just hated any woman that she thought showed her up. Which wasn't really hard, since her main job was holding down the couch most of the day to make sure it didn't run away. I turned a blind eye to all the trash she talked about me and blamed me for, but one day she took it too far. It was my mom's 60th birthday. Her friends planned to take her out to eat, then to a neighborhood bar for a couple of drinks. They invited me along. The morning of her birthday, I put on some nicer makeup and clothes than I usually do for work. It was a nicer restaurant and I wanted to look appropriate. I was gone for about two hours. When I came home, I walked past her and she called me a whore. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. I was pissed. I quietly plotted my revenge, pretending everything was fine for about two weeks until I had a chance to put my plan into place. She had all day plans on a Saturday, and for once I was all alone in the house. She was a larger woman, so she really didn't have too much clothes that actually fit and that she would wear. I went into her closet. I even took photos of where the clothes were hung and how they were placed. Then, I took all of those clothes and put them in the washer on the sanitized setting. If you don't know, the sanitized setting is water that gets up to 220 degrees, which will shrink just about anything. I made sure to dry them on the hottest setting too. Then, I very carefully hung them back up exactly as they were using my photos for guidance. The next day was glorious. She went to get dressed and absolutely nothing fit. She had a meltdown in her room. She called her family bawling about how she didn't understand how she could have gained so much weight in one week. She refused to keep a scale in the house. She just went by how her clothes fit. The next few days of watching her pull and tug at her clothes always brought a smile to my lips. I don't know if she ever bought new clothes. I broke up with her son shortly after and never looked back. Our next Reddit post is from Amniel. So to set the scene, I work in a failing restaurant. People are jumping shift left and right and I'm one of them. Or I'm trying to be. I'm a cook and the last good one left. In total, there are four cooks left. Before so many people jumped ship, I was working a morning shift with a cook that I'll call Rebecca. Well, Rebecca, let me give you an idea of the type of person she is. She's a short, angry person who can't do her job, and apparently her farts smell like flowers. She likes to cook on the egg station, but can't do to needing someone to hold her hand. I refuse to do so since she refused to do anything else. I'm running around the kitchen cooking everything from pancakes to steaks while she sits on the eggs and misses every other order. I simply don't have time to give her her orders and run the rest of the kitchen. To top it off, when a customer complains about her eggs, she yells at the server who asked for the remake. Overall, she's a jerk to everyone and refuses to do anything besides eggs. Well, finally her shift ended and she was on her way out. She hadn't done any cleaning, stocking, absolutely nothing, so I politely ask, Hey, Rebecca, can you please change the trash out before you leave? She yells back, you see, this is why we don't work well together. You don't sign my paycheck, and I don't need some kid to tell me how to do my job. Well, to start, I am young. I'm younger than the majority of cooks in the restaurant, and I'm definitely younger than most lead cooks. But I don't take kindly to people pulling an age card, especially when I have more experience in a leadership position, and definitely not from someone who can't do a simple task. Give respect to get respect. So fast forward to the present. I'm now working on the night shift, and I happen to see on the schedule that Rebecca is the morning cook. Thus begins my revenge. I clean the required places, but whoops, I forgot to change the trash, stock the line, or brick the grill. So as Rebecca walks in, there's nothing on the line, trash is overflowing, and icing on the cake, a party of 24 walked in as I walked out. When she saw this, she starts yelling to me about how this and that is supposed to be done and that I have to stay to help her with the party. My reply? I'm sorry, you don't cut my check. And I don't need some little B word telling me how to do my job. And I walked out and went home. When I came in for my next shift, I heard from a coworker that she got slammed. The place was a mess, but I cleaned it up quickly since it wasn't busy for the rest of the day. That was r slash petty revenge. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.